Hi, this is Brian from Trimec. Like a lot of people right now, I'm working from home. And since we've been staying home together, my family and I have decided to start wearing cloth masks when we go out to help slow the spread of the coronavirus COVID-19. We think of wearing masks as a way to show our friends and neighbors in our community that we care about them. Masks prevent me, if I were carrying the infection and asymptomatic, from spreading the infection to you. Your mask protects me, and my mask protects you. As you can see, we're still figuring it out with a lot of trial and error. I thought it would be interesting to use SolidWorks Flow to see what kind of a difference these masks can make. I want to make clear that what I've done only just barely scratches the surface of what's possible in SolidWorks Flow for a problem like this. There are hundreds of variables to play with and different approaches to take. The good news is, it's incredibly easy to set up these simulations. And my hope is that after seeing this, other members of the SOLIDWORKS community will try other things, show me how I might be wrong or how things could be done better, help use these tools to do a better job than I've already done. I'm not trying to say that any of this is definitive, but what I want to get across here is that you can try too. I started out with a 3D scan that I took of my own face using, Ar using an Artex Space Spider. Now, a lot of people don't have this available to them, and you could just as easily do this work with uh, a model that you download off of GrabCAD or some similar site of a generic human face shape or a mannequin head, but I had this available, so I decided to use it. To make the mask, I simply took cross-sections of the face scan and then made a spline that roughly matched up to the outer contours to represent the imperfect fit of a cloth mask. By creating a boundary surface, I connected these two sketches and made what turned out to be a pretty good visual match for the geometry of a face mask, and then thickened it to turn it into a solid body. The bodies intersect a little bit here, but that's okay for a flow study. I also modified the model of my face by adding a small extruded cut that I could later use in the flow study as the inlet to represent my breath. Setting up the flow study with a wizard involved almost entirely using the default settings for an external flow study. I chose air as my working fluid and added in relative humidity, which mainly acted as a good tracer for where in the flow volume you were seeing my breath. SOLIDWORKS flow defaults to a pretty big computational domain for external studies, so on something like this I was able to shrink down the computational domain, which cut way down on solve time. For the flow rate of the air coming out of my mouth, I found an article that said the tidal volume of a human breath, meaning the uh, difference in capacity in your lungs when they are full and as empty as you can get them, was about half a liter. So I used 0.5 liters per second as the uh, volume flow rate. This seemed like a good starting point, but there's probably some refinements that could be made or some adjustments, and you can get much higher flow rates if you take into account something like a human sneeze. The biggest challenge by far was to come up with a definition of a porous medium that would approximate the drag that the airflow has going through a fabric medium like a t-shirt or a tea towel. I did my best to come up with some properties that would be a pretty good dart throw at what this would look like, but there's definitely improvements that could be made to the process here. Finding the right mesh settings for this problem was a challenge. You need to have a high enough mesh density to analyze the flow through the thickness of the fabric, but not so much that this takes an incredibly long time to solve. A quick look at the results shows a definite impact of the mask. You can see here a good portion of the breath going through the mask being filtered through, and some of it being leaked up and down through the gaps around my nose and chin which matches pretty well with my own experience of having my glasses fog up when the mask doesn't fit tightly around my nose. 
For the sake of comparison, I reran the study with all the same parameters, but with the mask suppressed out. Big difference. To take things a step further, I ran a particle study, injecting some water droplets into my breath to see how they would travel around the flow. I was happy to see that something like half of them do not ever make it out of the mask. They're captured by the uh, porous media, and the rest are deflected in a safer direction straight up. This did make me think, however, about how the mask could be made better. Clearly, there would be an improvement if we could generate geometry that better hugged the shape of my face, maybe by adding some uh, metal clips or an extra elastic band that would cause the mask to fit my face better. The amazing thing about working in SolidWorks Flow like this is that after changing the geometry like this, all of my boundary conditions in the flow simulation are still valid. All of my setup is still there. All that needs to be done is to rerun. And as we see here, we get some noticeable differences in the results. The air coming out of my mouth is dispersed more effectively. Uh, the pressure is held in uh, more than before. But it could be argued that because we've reduced the size of the openings around my mouth, we're now getting higher velocity jets of air. I want to make really clear that these results are not conclusive. They should represent the beginning, not the end of a conversation. There are so many variables to play with and different considerations that could be uh, changed or dealt with differently in a study like this. The only thing that I'm comfortable saying from these results right now is that masks can help with social distancing, but shouldn't be seen necessarily as a substitute. They should add to the social distance that you keep to protect your friends and neighbors from the spread of the virus. I'm going to continue working on this, and I hope that as many people as possible in the SolidWorks community will join me. We have amazing tools at our fingertips, and using them is not very difficult. Anybody can do it. You don't have to be a PhD in CFD analysis to do work like this. I'd like to hear ideas of how this can be done better. I'd like to see other people try and run their own simulations. I'd like to see advice on how to make better masks. Let's keep this conversation going. Let's do everything we can to flatten the curve and be safe. Thank you very much.